Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 18. We are on page number 168, day 3018 it says, 3 stands for the fact that we are in the third edition, third edition, day 18. There are three problems that you will see on page number 168, please turn to it, make sure the book is in front of you. There are three problems that you will see, they are problem number 10, 11 and 12. These three problems that you see, they are on page number 168, are the exact same problems that have already appeared in the first and the second edition. If you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, which was done at a much slower pace in far more detail, you will find the solutions from day number 62 through 64. Day 62, day 63, and day 64. Just type in GRE math day 62. Let's take a look at the very first problem number 10. We are given a parallelogram P, Q, R, and O, P, Q, R. Let's draw it on the blackboard so that we can deal with it. A parallelogram that is. So we need a line that is parallel to that line, something like this, and a line that is parallel to this line. Voila. I'm going to fix it just a little bit. I don't like it. I think the blackboard is slippery. Yeah, that's good enough. As we read the problem, it tells us that the coordinates of point P are 2 and 4. So this is our point P. This is point O, O for the origin. Point P, Q, and R. And we are told that P has coordinates of 2 and 4. We are also told that Q has coordinates of six, 8 and 6. 8 and 6. The question simply is, what are the coordinates of point R? That's all they are looking for. So let's find out, shall we? It's very simple, very straightforward process. To find the X coordinate of point R, to find the X coordinate of point R, I'm going to erase this question mark, they are annoying. Because it's a parallelogram, what we need to understand is that whatever the distance is from, from here to here, it's got to be the same distance, and uh, we're look, trying to figure out the x coordinate here, and the q, we are told, the x coordinate of q is 8. It's 8 and this is 2, which means this distance is 6. This distance is 6, which means the distance from O to R must also be 6, must also be 6, which means the x coordinate of R is 6. Now let's work on the y coordinate with a different color. Again, we know the distance from O to P here, the vertical distance, is 4. And we also know the distance from here to here, the vertical distance, this is 4 and this is 6, which means it's 2. This vertical distance here is 2. Which means that the vertical distance from here to here must also be 2. This vertical distance must be the same vertical distance as this one. There we go. The y coordinate is 2. There we go. We're all done. Let's move on to the next one. Let's move on to the next one. As I finish the problem, as I turn around, I just realized that I left my cup of tea upstairs. It's no good. It's no good. Next problem. This was number 10. This was number 10. Number 11 is what we're going to do next. In number 11 we are told that the relationship between a circle and a circumference is given by relationship between, not the circle, but rather between the area of a circle and its circumference and its circumference is given by a equals to kc squared. 
our job is to find out this value of this k. What is that k equal to? So what we're going to do is we're going to write down the formula for the area of the circle. We can write down the formula for the circumference of the circle. We are going to equate the two and see what happens. A represents in this equation, A represents the area. How do we write the area of the circle? The area of the circle is pi r squared. Pi r squared. So that part is done equals k times c squared. C is, how do you find the circumference of a circle? It's just 2 pi r. And the whole thing, whole thing is being squared. This whole thing is being squared. The circumference is being squared. So there we go. In other words, what they're telling us is that, what they're telling us is that the area of any circle is simply some constant times the square of its circumference. That's what this equation says. Area of a given circle, any circle, area of a circle is equal to some constant times the square of its circle. And our job is to find out the value of that constant. That's what we're doing. So we just have to go solve for k. Divide both sides by this quantity. But before we do that, before we do that, let's open this parenthesis. So if you open the parenthesis, we have k times, when you open it, 2 squared becomes 4, and then pi squared, and then r squared. Are you with me? So, oh, actually, this is much simpler than it than it needs to be. It's it's much. Oh, maybe quite, maybe quite not, because I I got excited for a second because I thought this was pi squared and this is pi squared. This is not pi squared. This is pi, and this is r squared. Oh, this is r squared and this is r squared. Well, at least we get rid of that bloody thing. Let's divide both sides by r squared. We have pi r squared. Let's divide both sides by r squared. R squared goes away. And if we divide both sides by pi, if we divide both sides by pi. And then the pi is going to disappear from here. And this pi is going to go away with that pi. This is pi times pi just becomes pi. So what we end up here on this side is 1 equals k times 4 pi. Oh, this is very simple. Divide both sides by 4 pi. If we divide both sides by 4 pi, we'll find that k equals 1 over 4 pi. Very cool. That's it. That's about it. In other words, in other words, we're going to use, we're going to put in the statement that I'm about to make, we're going to pretend that pi is a, pi is three. We're going to we go claim that we're making, we're not making a claim that pi is equal to three. What we, we what we're going to claim is that pi is approximately three, which it is. Pi is approximately three. Three times four is twelve. So this is one twelfth. So what this thing actually tells us is that area of any circle, area of any circle is simply one twelfth the square of its circumference. If you if you have the circumference, if you take the square of the circumference, and if you take approximately one twelfth of that amount, that would represent the approximate area of the circle, not the exact area, because we're using three. Let's do the next one, shall we? This was problem number eleven. We go do twelve. In problem number 12, no, problem number 12 is a little involved. Problem number 12 is a little involved. We have a sequence of numbers. Sequence of numbers. And we are calling them A1, A2, A3, so on and so forth until the A and it just goes on. The next one is going to be A. This is a n, the next one is going to be a n plus 1, a subscript n plus 1, a n plus 2 and so forth. It just goes on forever. And it is defined by and it is defined by the following relationship. So the answer to the previous question we found was 1 over 4 pi, I believe, and that's answer choice A. That was answer choice A. So it's defined by this relationship here. A to the n equals to 1 over a n minus 1 over n plus 2. For example, for example, for example, 
a tenth. In other words, the tenth term in this series, in this series, the tenth term is going to be this is a a subscript ten. A, a subscript tenth term is going to be one over ten because our n is equal to ten. One over ten minus one over ten plus two, which is twelve. This is our tenth term. If you wanted to find say 35th term in the series, it will simply be 1 over 35 minus 1 over 37 minus 1 over 37 and so on and so forth and so on and so forth. The question is what is the sum? The question is what is the sum? What is the sum of the first 20 terms. That's what we're going to find out. What's the sum of the first 20 terms? Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. So what's the first term here? The first term is going to be 1 over 1, which is just 1. 1 over 1, which is just going to be 1, because n is 1. So 1 over 1 over n plus 2. n is 1. 1 plus 2 is going to be 3. The second term is going to be 1 over n, which is 2 here, minus, minus 1 over n plus 2, 1 over n, n is, uh, n is 2 here, so it's 2 plus 2 is becomes 4. The third term is going to be, this is the 2 by the way, the third term is going to be 1 over 3 minus 1 over 5. Fourth term is going to be 1 over 4 minus 1 over 6, and so on and so forth. It just goes on forever. It just goes on forever until we reach until we reach the 20th term the 20th term is going to be 20th term is going to be 1 over 20 minus 1 over 22 and we want to find their sum this goes on forever until the 20th term let's find on the top shall we let's call this sum let's represent this sum with letter S. S represents the sum. What's the first term? The first term is 1 minus 1 half. What's the second term? Second term is 1 half minus 1 fourth. The third term is going to be 1 third minus 1 fifth. Plus, it goes on and on and on and on. The 18th term is going to be 1 over 18 minus 1 over 1 over 20. This is the 18th term. The 19th term is going to be plus, I'm just going to do it here, the 19th term is going to be 1 over 19 minus 1 over 21st. And the 20th term, which is the final term that we're looking for, is going to be 1 over 20 minus 1 over 22. And that's it. We want up to the 20th. The sum is from from 1 to 20th term. What do you notice here? The very first thing we should notice is that, I'm looking for my cap before it dries. The very first thing we should notice is that the sum of this 20th term, if, it, if that's what we are interested in, and that is exactly what we are interested in, if we do the sum here, we will not be able to get rid of this one. We cannot, we cannot cancel out this one. This half, by the way, one half minus one half, will cancel out with this one half. What else we will not be able to get rid of? Oh, I think I made a mistake. I think I made a big time mistake. This is this is this is not one minus one half because it's n plus two. It is n plus two. It is one third. Oh, I almost made a boo-boo. It is one-third. And this is one-half. Let's start again then. It's all right. It's okay. It's no one is infallible. So, let's start again. First thing we notice is that there is no way to get rid of this one, which means the correct answer, whatever it is, must have one in it. Must have one in it. We can cross out answer choice E. E does not have one. All the other, 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 all the other answer choices start with one, but E does not. A, B, C, D, E. Cross it out. The second thing we notice is that we have a negative one third 
we have a positive one third. There's going to be a gap of two terms because it's n plus two thing. Negative one third and positive a positive one third. They're going to go away. Similarly, if there is a one fourth here down the road, down the road, we will see one fourth. The next term would have been. If you were to write first term, second term, third term, if you were to write fourth term here, the fourth term would have been one fourth minus one sixth. One fourth minus one sixth. That would have been the fourth fourth term. We did not write it. It goes on, but there is a one fourth coming up here. There is a positive one, negative one fourth here. Positive one fourth is coming up here. So that's going to go away. I'm going to use different colors. What is? And they are all going to go away. Negative one fifth here down the road when we start the seventh term. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, fifth term rather. The fifth term is going to be one over five, and that one over five is going to go with that one. What else do we see? This one one twentieth on the twentieth term is cancels out the one twentieth that appears in the eighteenth term. This one nineteen that we see here, what's going to happen to that? Positive one nineteen. We need. It's positive one nineteenth. We need a negative one nineteenth, and where would that going to appear? That would that would have appeared here. Here we would have had the one term before it. One term. This is the eighteenth term. The seventeenth term would have been. Listen carefully. This is the eighteenth term. How do we know this is the eighteenth term? Because it's one over eighteen. That's the eighteenth term. Because it is. Because the formula is one over n minus one over n plus two. So, this is the eighteenth term because it's one over eighteen. The seventeenth term, seventeenth term. If you were to write it, the seventeenth term would be one over seventeen minus one over nineteen. That would be the seventeenth term. Put the plus sign here. There we go. That is nineteen, not ninety-nine. Bottom line is that they are going to all go away. This is going to go away with this guy. This is going to go away from the guy before. What are the only two terms at the end that we cannot get rid of? The last two ones, because this one stays, and this one stays. The only way we can get rid of one over twenty-one, negative one over twenty-one, is to have the twenty-first term. The twenty-first term would have been, if we were to do twenty-first term, if we were to do twenty-first term, it would be, it would have been, it would have been. We don't have it, but it would have been one over twenty-one minus one over twenty-third. And then, in that case, the positive one over twenty-one would cancel out negative one over twenty-one. But we don't have the twenty-first term. We don't have the twenty-first term. We don't have the twenty-second term. It ends at the twentieth term. We cannot get rid, of, get rid of this guy. We cannot get rid of this guy. We cannot get rid of this one, and we cannot get rid of this one half. We cannot get rid of those two terms because there is nothing before them. We cannot get rid of the last two terms because there is nothing after them. There's always going to be lag of two because of the n plus two. That's it. So the final answer is that the sum of these twenty terms is the sum is plural singular. The sum of the twenty terms is one. Right here, one. This is the sum. Plus one half. Let's put this two together, and then this term right here minus one over twenty-one, and then this term right here minus one over twenty-two, and we can since they are both minus, since they are both negative, we can put them together and make it a positive. There you go. Now that is how. The answer is presented to us in answer choice B. I almost messed it up in the beginning, didn't I? It's a good idea to pay attention. It's always a good idea to pay attention. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Let's see what we have on the next page. Uh, next page, we only have two problems. That's what we're going to do next page. But the problem that you see there, problem number fourteen, is a nasty one. It's going to require some work on the next page, page one sixty-nine. We'll do them to tomorrow, okay? The first problem that you see there has to do with weighted average. That's not a, that's not a big deal. That's a piece of cake. But the second one is going to require some work. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.